joining me now is the gorgeous Salama Mohammed. Thank you so much for talking to DXB today. So I want to ask you, first of all, you have inspired so many women to embrace their natural beauty. But let's talk about your story. When did you decide that you want to share your story and embrace your skin and share that with everybody? I always felt like I never fit in the beauty standards. I always felt, you know, I was the black sheep of like what beauty standards is standing for like I did not have what it takes to fit in that beauty category and the beauty standards. I have vitiligo since the age of five and I always felt that I was never felt welcomed or heard or seen so I wanted people to feel comfortable in their own skin. Let's touch a little bit on the beauty industry because you've mentioned before that it's got quite a narrow idea of what beauty is. So how are you looking to break down those barriers with your brand Peaceful? Just to set the record straight, like I felt the beauty standard within like my environment, within mm -hmm. Salama, within Salama's life, that it was narrow minded. Um, I'm not here generalizing what other people feel like. That was my personal journey. So what we're trying to do is break that from a personal experience is break that boundary and break that wall that you don't need to fit in what beauty standards in your own environment feels like. So let's delve in a little bit deeper about Peaceful. Can you tell us about the brand and where the idea came from? So Peaceful is a skincare brand. We're a luxury and high-end skincare product that we manufacture product from scratch. So it's not white labeled, it's actually made from scratch. It took me three years to manufacture and, and perfect Peaceful. We're the only brand that is standing, withstanding actually the heat. So we're heat resilient. Um, that's what makes us different from the rest of the skincare products. You know, when you buy skincare product or product for any matter, Two weeks into the summer, it's like it, the formula changes, the texture changes, the aroma changes. Peaceful doesn't because we've created product to withstand the heat, 50 degrees. And um, what makes us different as well is we're from the people for the people. Okay. So what is next for you? What have you got coming up next? Can you share with us at DXV today? What is next for Salama Muhammad? One product at a time. Um, I feel like what's next for us is always just think of a creative way, innovative way to create products that are missing in the market. Karina Kapoor Khan, welcome to the UAE. I mean, you're absolutely no stranger to it, so it's great to have you here. First of all, how are you? I'm very well, but yeah, feeling great and I returned to the UAE after five years. So really, really happy to be here. Oh, so excited. And, you know, I'm going to quote you now, and I don't know if you remember you saying this, but you said once, I don't want to do stardom anymore. I just want to do me. Mm -hmm. What is Karina Kapoor Khan's version of doing me? I think doing things that I love, doing things that I enjoy, um, doing things for myself also a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm whether it's producing a film like Buckingham Murders, which is, um, you know, it's like, it's slightly more like an indie movie, which has got an amalgamation of different cultures in it, like we're speaking Hindi, Punjabi, English. Mm -hmm. So uh, choosing roles that, you know, I want to do also a little bit mm -hmm. different and yeah, balancing the commercial side of it as well. Well, you know, one thing you said in your book was, I mean, there were so many things you said in your book, but one thing in particular which really struck me was when you were thanking your mother and your mother-in-law for instilling a level, conf a level of confidence in you when you were pregnant and going into motherhood and you had so much options for work as well. I think you're an icon for confidence. And, and I understand that during that time, it, it's a lot of mum guilt as well. T tell me how you have instilled confidence in yourself and how important that has been to instill in your children as well. I think confidence comes from also being nurtured, being loved. Um, I think my mum kind of, you know, gave me and nurtured me. It's like watering a plant, you know, it kind of, it needs that, it needs water to grow. So I think for children, they need love and nurturing from their parents to get the confidence. I'm very, very lucky to have had my mother and my father do that to me. I'm sure all parents try to do that to all their children. And that's what I'm doing with Tim and Jay, is, you know, um, of course, it's being a little strict, but at the same time, it's like, 
you know, pushing them and helping them to, you know, just enjoy themselves, do what they love doing, mm -hmm. and kind of giving them that, you know, energy and confidence to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Last one, and I want to switch it up, just do a quick fire round. And your options are, um, tell me how it was, or pretty hot and tempting. So it's either a yes or a no. Okay, here are your situations. Karina Kapoor Khan. We have staying in with a movie and a takeaway on your night off. Is it tell me how it was, like, mm, or is it pretty hot and tempting? Definitely pretty hot and tempting. I thought so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, wearing heels. Pretty hot and tempting. Okay, okay. Uh, getting a surprise party on your birthday. Tell me how it was. <laughs> I thought so. And last one, and I know the answer to this, but crime thrillers instead of rom-coms. I think everyone knows that I'm a big uh, crime thriller buff, whether it's books or a show, yeah. that's my go-to. Mm -hmm. Pretty hot and tempting. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, best of luck out there at Sharjah International Book Fair. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Here we are with ex-United legend Mikel Sylvester. Mikel, I mean, what a great match we have coming up on the 18th uh, and such great legends coming to Dubai. What are we thinking? How are we feeling in the run-up? Yeah, it's a fantastic lineup. I think for us, it's uh, it's amazing to be to be part of it. I'm uh, yeah, looking forward to it. It's, it's going to be a great occasion. I think we don't see enough of it in, in Dubai. I think it's a great platform to, to bring these type of players, to support the community, to mm. support Al Jalila Foundation and uh, yeah, uh, it's 10 days now, so it's uh, around the corner. You're actually a local here in Dubai. Uh, you're doing some great work in the third division here. Tell me how that's going and, and tell me how great, and I guess uh, the championing of the sport is, is moving in the right direction here in Dubai. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's not only in Dubai, I mean, in the whole country, mm -hmm. uh, all region. And we know also what's happening, uh, what's going on. We had last year uh, the World Cup yeah. in Qatar, and uh, we were going to have the, another World Cup 2034 uh, in Saudi. So this is a great. Uh, as you said earlier, I live here, it's been six years. Mm -hmm. And uh, why? Uh, family. And at the end of the day, also for the, the, the you know the security that we had here, the the, the, the light that we can have here, and uh, this is this is a great place. Um, and when it comes to sport, as what we were talking earlier, you know, it is very important to, to, to have a, you know a, a different culture, different mindset, different uh, people, because this is from that situation that you learn, mm -hmm. and then you you grow up. Uh, Football, as we can see, you know, you have a lot of uh, players coming from everywhere around the world, and uh, this is this is a great. Thing. Now, uh, only a few days away from from the big match, what are you going to be doing in the build-up to prepare for it? I need to run a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been running for, for years, <laughs> but I need to to raise my uh, my running level because mm -hmm. it's going to be a, a competition. Mm -hmm. Players don't want to to lose. We are competitors first, mm -hmm. and we are athletes, so. I'm more pleased to see uh, my ex teammates. Mm -hmm. I'm pleased to see a full stadium, mm -hmm. hopefully, to see joy, to see the celebration. And especially in this difficult time, it's, it's really important to send a different message that, that the one we see, we have uh, our task to do, and playing football is probably the, the best way to bring people together. Welcome to DXV today. It's an absolute honor. Uh, once again, congratulations for all that you've achieved, not just over, you know, you, re you releasing your memoir worthy, but just all the years. It's been fantastic to see you. And um, I first of all want to start with worthy because it's a memoir which you have truly opened up and given people such an insight into who you are and, and your journey. Uh, Tell me about why that was so important for you to do now at this point in your life. Well, I'll tell you what, I blame Jay because <laughs> I blame Mr. Jay Shetty because Jay for the longest time had been saying, you know, Jay, do you need to write a book? And I was like, Jay, I don't want to write a book. Like I'm over it. Like, no. And then we kind of got into it one day and I was like, you know what, Jay's your brother. Like, Go home and think about this, why he might be thinking this is a good idea for you. And so a couple of days later, it came to me. I was like, oh man, like my journey from lack of self-worth to feeling worthy 
aha, that's a universal idea. That's a universal struggle, right? And I was like, got it. And I called Jay and I said, all right, dude, I get it. <laughs> gonna do it. And, and what was, because, I mean, you're so used to opening up about your life. We've seen that on Red Table Talk, you get personal. Like, so you're no, you're no stranger to it. But writing a memoir, it's very differently cathartic. Can you tell me about that process for you? Well, you know, at the Red Table, I, I was really limited on what I could talk about and what I could share because in order to really go into depth about my journey, I had to be able to give context and history in order for any of it to make any kind of sense, right? And so what the book allows is that I could really draw people in to my story, to really understand certain nuances, to really get like certain aspects of the journey that talking just can't do unless I have hours to sit and talk with you, right? And we just didn't have that at the table, but I have hours in the book, you know, to sit with you and 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 really communicate with you and, and really immerse you into my world. You wear so many hats. You've taken on so many roles in your life as many of us do, uh, you know, mother, daughter, partner, friend, whatever it may be. One, one side of you that a lot of people may or may not know about is your strong entrepreneurial spirit. You know, mm -hmm. that, that comes through with uh, Westbrook being valued at half a billion dollars. Congratulations on that. Um, and it seems like that spirit really runs through your family deep because you're yeah. not shy of it at all either. Tell me where that importance of ownership comes from, from you, and then why it's passed down onto the generation as well. Yeah, I think um, even at my at my kids when when I was my kids' age, right? Um, that was always a part of like needing to own my ideas, needing to own my creativity in some way. And I didn't always know at their age um, how to make it a business, right? Um, and so I think with Jaden and Willow, what we tried to tried to do with them, especially like with Jaden, helping him um, develop just water at the age of 14, right? And Will and I really decided to help to guide him in creating that business so that he would understand how to create businesses around his creative ideas from then on. And so then he has his Misfits clothing line, right? Um, and then Willow is on her way of like, she runs her, how she runs her music business is like, I'm, I'm so proud of her. <laughs> That's all I can say. Willow is such a little young boss. Like she, when she tells her story, that's going to be a whole nother thing. But we really felt like it was important that we pass that down to them at a young age so that they could start earlier than Will and I did. Like Will and I got late in the game with it and having to learn how to create business. But it's nothing, it, for me, it gives me so much pride, you know, to be able to say, I had this little seed of an idea and then I was able to make this empire out of it. And Red Table Talk for me, you know, was one of those seeds. And now, you know, I know with Facebook Watch that closed up. So now we're about to take Red Table to a whole nother platform where I'm really, I'm in negotiation to do something really different. Kind of like what I, I something, I, that's why I went with Facebook and I made some really, really beautiful deals with Facebook. And so I'm, I'm doing this new thing. I'm trying this new, new idea that I can't share yet, but I'm so excited as part of like creating a new Red Table Talk empire. So yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. <laughs>